the Birmingham Housing Authority has decided to end its partnership with Church of the Highlands. And essentially what they were doing, the memorandum that they, uh, that they had with Church of the Highlands is that they were getting together and having them help people, I think, in housing projects. I didn't really understand exactly all that because the, the article didn't make clear exactly what the relationship was. But from what I gather, what they were doing is they were helping the poor. They were helping people in the projects, helping people that uh, were downtrodden get basic necessities like food, clothing, and, and working with them on things like that. And uh, now they're saying that they have severed that relationship with Church of the Highlands for one of the craziest reasons I've ever heard. It's apparently because the founder of that church and the, the minister there, the main one, Church of the Highlands is a little bit different for those of you who don't know. They actually have multiple campuses across the state. They have one here in Montgomery. They have one in Auburn. And they have preachers and ministers there as well, but they also have like a main minister that does a simulcast for the services, so they just sort of video him in for worship in, in Auburn and Montgomery. I don't know if they do that every Sunday, but I know that's a, a common practice with them. Anyway, so, so he's kind of the big wig over Church of the Highlands, and what's interesting here is he just, they found out that he liked some Charlie Kirk tweets. Now, for those of you who don't know Charlie Kirk, he is the founder of Turning Point USA. He's a conservative, and uh, it's just fascinating to me that just by liking some of his tweets, apparently the housing authority there in Birmingham said that that was a bridge too far and we can no longer enjoy a relationship with Birmingham. They said specifically that the message that Charlie Kirk put out there that this guy apparently likes and, and he follows Charlie Kirk on Twitter is something that does not comport with their values. It's not something that g falls in line with their particular worldview, which, okay, let, let's say it were David Duke and he liked a whole bunch of really horrible racist tweets that David Duke put out. Okay, I see where you're coming from if that happens. I don't know that liking somebody's tweets or following them should be grounds for that, but even if you were going to come up with a perfect scenario of why you would want to cancel somebody because of tweets that they liked, that would kind of be your go-to example. But what's crazy about this is they uh, apparently one of the tweets that became a, a big issue that Charlie Kirk put out there is when he was criticizing Governor Ralph Northam who, if you may recall, Governor Ralph Northam is the guy that dressed up as either the guy in blackface in college or the guy in the Klan suit. I'm not sure which one is better or worse, and we never were able to figure out whether he was the one in blackface or in the Klan costume. Either way, not a good look for the governor of Virginia. And that's who Charlie Kirk was calling out, and he was calling him out specifically on that because he is a person that used to wear blackface, apparently. And that's what they take issue with? It doesn't make any sense. Charlie Kirk is calling out a person for his racism. The preacher there at Church of the Highlands is liking that he's calling out the governor of Virginia for his racism. And now the housing authority of Birmingham is saying that he's unfit to have a relationship with these people and, and help them uh, get clothing and food and all the other things, and, and this, which is the largest partnership in, in Alabama, the largest church in Alabama there in, in Birmingham. That's, that's your big takeaway? That's your line too far? That doesn't make any sense. And here's another thing, too. Let's take the names and the specifics out of this for just a second to help us understand this. Liking a person's tweet and liking tweets from a person does not mean that you agree with absolutely everything that that person says. Case in point, I'm a pretty conservative guy. I think most people would tell you that if asked. And uh, don't really like socialism, not a big fan of communism, so on and so forth. I follow Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I follow Bernie Sanders. I follow Elizabeth Warren. I follow, if I'm not mistaken, every single Democrat candidate that was running this year. So, all of them. 
I also follow a whole bunch of publications that I don't necessarily agree with. I follow HuffPo and Vox and, uh, I mean, all kinds of them. And occasionally, I will even like their tweets because I follow them. Sometimes they'll say something that makes sense. I have liked AOC tweets before. I have liked Bernie Sanders tweets before. Now, normally, we wound up arriving at the those conclusions through a different, uh, a different method. Like, if Bernie Sanders said something that I thought was actually good, I'm sure that he got there for a completely different reason than I did. But the point is, you know, like, it, it wouldn't be surprising to hear that Elizabeth Warren or uh, AOC tweeted out something about uh, how we... Uh, how pornography uh, exploits women. Okay, well, well, that would be something that they would theoretically say, and I would agree with. I don't know if they've actually said that or not. I'm not sure about their stance on that. I'm just using that as a hypothetical. So just liking someone, especially following them, doesn't mean that you agree with everything that they say, but liking one of their tweets does not mean that you agree with every single person that they say. And the craziest thing on this is, and this will show you that I'll defend people even if I don't agree with everything that they believe, I'm really not a big Charlie Kirk fan. I'm not. I don't hate him. I don't think he's terrible. And he says some things that I agree with, I'm sure. But uh, as far as political commentators go, Charlie Kirk's actually pretty darn low on my list. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of Charlie Kirk's work. I think that he is unnecessarily uh, abrasive. I think that he's too much of a, a bomb thrower. Uh, I don't agree with a lot of his economic policy. He's actually much more of a moderate than a conservative on a lot of his economic policy, his stance on things like welfare, so on and so forth. And when it comes to Church of the Highlands, I'm not a big fan of Church of the Highlands either. I mean, I don't hate them. I have really good friends from there. there there's people that have been guests on the show that are either members or former members. I work with people at the radio station, not going to say who, but there are people at the radio station there at Cumulus that go to Church of the Highlands. I don't think they're terrible people, but I don't agree with a lot of the, the theology that they teach. I disagree with sort of the trapping and, and what they surround themselves with in the church building. I don't agree with their method of worship in a lot of ways. But the point is, I'm not defending these people because I have some kind of dog in the fight. I just think that it's utterly ridiculous that this, this becomes the standard, and this is about as good an example of cancer cult, uh, cancer cancer cancel culture as you will ever see the fact that you're even adjacent to somebody that they find detestable or that I disagree with that you've got to be cast out of polite society and we can't have a relationship with you anymore I think really one of the funniest points that you can make in all of this is that ironically they have made Charlie Kirk an incredibly powerful person by doing this think about this Charlie Co Kirk's influence is so broad and so powerful that just because other people like things that he says, he can get them fired. That's a lot of power for one man to have. I mean, Charlie Kirk, th that guy's got a level of influence I can't even understand if that is the standard that they're going with right now. But apparently that's how it works. It's just mind-blowing what this is going to, but... The thing is, and this is the thing that I find, so it's the, the big slice of irony in the middle of this whole thing. When it comes to Charlie Kirk and, and Turning Point USA, who do some things that I agree with and some things that I don't, because they disagree with him, because they find at least some of the stuff that he says offensive, they have not only cast out him from their inner circle, but anybody that even likes him or agrees with him on some things. They are the intolerant bigots that they claim that Charlie Kirk is. Now, Charlie Kirk is certainly not a racial bigot. I mean, he's a guy that works close. The two people that he works most closely with are Dennis Prager, an Orthodox Jew, and Candace Owens, who is a black conservative. Those are the two people he has worked with more than anybody else in his career, at least as far as I know. And he doesn't mind having a plethora of different ideas. I've heard him have on his programs, or I've heard him go on to other conservative programs, people that wildly disagree with him on certain issues, but he's still willing to have the conversation. 
the housing authority of Birmingham is saying, nope, the fact that you even like some things that this guy says means that you are an anathema and we cannot tolerate being around you. They are the bigots that they claim that Charlie Kirk is. They are the ones that are intolerant and close-minded and refuse to even entertain the thought of associating with a person that liked some of his tweets. That's about as intolerant as it gets. I don't think that you can get any more intolerant than that. He's just adjacent to a person that they do not like. It really does blow my mind. And on all of this, I think that we could all stand to be a little bit more open-minded if there was any takeaway from this particular story. I think that that would be it. Be willing to listen to people that disagree with you and, and even be willing to have a relationship with people that disagree with you because, ironically, the people that are going to be hurt most by this decision by the Birmingham Housing Authority are primarily people that are minority, that are poor, that are not going to have the blessing of working with these people now if the Church of the Highlands is any kind of church at all, and granted, I don't, I don't know a ton about their theology, I just know that we have some disagreements on certain things, but if they are anything that even somewhat resembles the church that Jesus Christ built, they're going to figure out a way to help these people regardless. And so I don't think that necessarily nullifying that partnership is going to greatly hinder that. I don't know. But when it comes to this, it's funny because... For the longest time, secular liberals have made the case when it comes to things like, for example, child adoption. When Christians say, well, God designed the family to have a mother and a father, and so most Christians believe either that gay couples shouldn't be allowed to adopt, or if gay couples are allowed to adopt, and by the way, this is my position, then they should do so on the basis of they get absolute last priority. The best thing for a child is having both a mother and a father, Therefore, every couple that is a heterosexual married couple should get priority over a gay couple just like they would over a single person that's wanting to adopt. And so they have said stuff like that makes us bigots and closed-minded and homophobic and all of that stuff. And yet what they're doing here is they're saying, because the liberal argument is always, what, you'd rather the kid just not have parents? Well, again, I actually think it just should just be a priority thing, but there is a legitimate there is a legitimate argument to be made through uh, pediatricians, medical doctors, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go in, all into it here because that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about. But there is legitimate concern that that might be something that's not best for the kid. In this one, they're saying anybody that even associates with somebody that we disagree with, we don't want that person feeding the hungry. We, we don't want them feeding the hungry. We don't want them clothing the poor. That's something that we cannot stand and tolerate. It's utterly ridiculous. I, I don't understand the mentality. I don't agree with Church of the Highlands on a lot of things. Theologically, I'm sure. But I wouldn't say, no, no, don't feed those hungry people because you and I have some theological disagreements. I wouldn't go down to the Baptist church or the Methodist church or the Catholic church and say, no, I'd rather you not feed these people or clothe these people or do any benevolence work because you and I just don't see eye to eye on things like the necessity of baptism or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit or some kind of theological issue that I have between those people. It's not a thing that is going to happen. Yet the left, like I said, absolutely prove themselves once again to be the intolerant bigots they claim Christians are. My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.